Welcome to Weekly Devotions, a ministry of the Chaplains of the Bethany Group. I'm Pastor Kevin Schwartz. I'm so glad you took some time to join together in worship and word today. We're entering the fifth week of Lent. Wow. In a couple weeks, we'll, we'll be into Holy Week and Good Friday and Palm Sunday. Things are moving along ever so quickly. But I hope in the midst of, of the hurry and the busyness, you're able to take time to quiet yourself and to remember to be still and know that he is God. I hope this is part of that practice also. Shall we begin with a word of blessing? Holy God, we come to you and we are grateful for your presence, for your love and your peace. We commit this time to you that amidst of the hurry and the busyness and concerns of our world, we focus on you, Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We ask your blessing. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. reading from Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgression and my sin is ever before me. Against you and you alone have I sinned and have done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And we put a right spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Sustain in me a willing spirit. Thanks be to God for his word. Heavenly friend, through thorns. 
reading from Hebrews chapter 5. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to one who was able to save from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became a source of eternal salvation for all who would obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet Sung by flaming tongues above Praise the mount, I'm fixed upon it Mount of thy redeeming love Here I raise my Ebenezer Hither by thy help I've come and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor Daily I'm constrained to be Let thy goodness, like a fetter Bind my wandering heart to thee Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it Prone to leave the God I love Here's my heart, O oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. M. Scott Peck, a Christian writer and psychiatrist, mentions about having a conversation with a, a lady and who's involved in a variety of philosophies and worldviews of and he was speaking to her about the person of Jesus, how she understood Jesus. And they got in the, the conversation of his death and, and crucifixion. And as they were talking about this, the, this lady's uh, understanding seemed to talk about where, where Jesus did not feel any pain or suffering. And he, Peck was, was very intrigued by this and said, well, how could crucifixion not cause pain? And she quite happily replied, well, he was so highly developed in his Christ consciousness that he was able to project himself into his astral body and kind of take off from there. Well, I suppose that's one theory. And some would say there's a danger in thinking of Jesus as both divine and human. But we need to understand him in both those ways. But we may be inclined to say, well, but Jesus being the Son of God, he could do those things, but it didn't really hurt him. At least not hurt him in the same way it would hurt us. I would suggest to you, and, and I think Scripture suggests to us, that unless we take the human pain and suffering of Jesus seriously, we may fail to take seriously our own call to face pain, suffering, and to be faithful in that. Jesus reminds us and, and actually calls us to follow him. And this includes to follow him in the journey to the cross. 
not as spectators, but as participants in suffering for the sake of the world. Our reading in Hebrews that we just had gives us an intensely human portrait of, of Jesus, one filled with mental anguish and dread, anticipated suffering, pleading for mercy, and uh, final uh, a, a resignation of his fate. Did you hear the phrase, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears. Many rabbis in ancient Israel taught there was three levels of prayer. Verbal or silent, thought out and controlled. Secondly, there was loud cries, shouting at God in anguish and anger. And thirdly, tears, where it's pure emotion and pain. The scripture here in Hebrews really shows us all three. But it mostly shows us loud cries and tears. Jesus pouring out his fear and pain to God. One who feels no pain and no fear. One who is not human. Does not weep and cry before God. But Jesus does. Verse 7 says, To the one who is able to save him from death. And he was heard. Jesus knew the path that he was on. The path to the cross. He also knew that God could save him from this end. And Jesus was not afraid to let his fears and feelings be known to God and to others. What agony he must have felt. Save me if you would, won't you? Why won't you? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But again, verse 7 reminds us, he was hurt. Yet, he died in agony on the cross. So what kind of hearing is that? Well, it reminds me a bit of a story of a, a young boy, Randall. He was about 12 or 13 in Boy Scouts, and they were out on an outing, and uh, they were running around, in, as young boys do, and, and Randall tripped and fell. Fell in the gravel on the road. You may have seen that happen, or, or even had it to yourself. It's painful. And, and a piece of gravel got lodged under Randall's skin, actually, in, in his forehead. It was quite a concern. And, uh, there was a little medical clinic maybe a, a few miles down the road. And the boy's father picked up Randall and, and rushed him there to the clinic. And the doctor who was there was a very good doctor. Not really good in, in bedside manner, but, but a really good doctor. As Randall lied there on the, uh, the, the cold, stiff medical table, the doctor came in with a, well, it looked like a pretty large needle, to, to put some numbing in his forehead so he could do the appropriate treatments. Most folks are not fond of needles, but Randall was deathly afraid of them. Randall called out, Daddy, 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 please don't let him hurt me. The doctor uh, held Randall down, put his arm on his chest, and, and proceeded to to inject the needle. All the while, Randall continued to, to cry and to plead and to, to reach out to his father. And out of the corner of Randall's eye, he could see his dad standing there, clutching Randall's jacket, and his, his knuckles are, are white in fear, and a tear coming down his father's face. Daddy, Daddy, Daddy! Randall was hurt. Oh, he was very much hurt by his father. But his father stood by and allowed the procedure to happen. Reminds us of Hebrews chapter 8. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. Having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obeyed him. Here's the great mystery of faith. That Jesus, as he comes to the cross, fully, completely, totally, 
for us because of God's great love. And the beautiful thing is, he's there for us. In the midst of the, the deepest, most painful, most lonely time, Jesus has been there. When we felt we've been heard, but no action, we've been, even maybe we felt we haven't been heard, Jesus has been there. We felt we've been even ignored or abandoned by God, Jesus has been there. Think of times where you know others who've been in this situation, or maybe you yourself. Jesus has been there. Jesus is here, and he's with you no matter what you're going through. He is with you, and he is faithful. The promise of the gospel is not that the Christian life will be easy. The gospel is not always about how to make your life, your marriage, your career, your children, or anything else work out in a pleasing way for yourself. The gospel is the call to follow Jesus to the cross and beyond. To follow Jesus serving the poor and the needy. To follow Jesus reaching out to the despised and rejected. To follow Jesus in standing up for those who are oppressed and ill-served by the world. To follow Jesus in fighting against illness and evil wherever they may be found. And sometimes in following Jesus to the cross may mean we may suffer for our commitments. We'll be rejected and scorned as much as those as with whom we will take our stand. The call is to follow Christ. Not an easy way, not a painless path. Not likely to be smooth sailing. It is the way of the cross. And the promise of the gospel is where God calls us to go. Where Jesus has already been. And as we go, Jesus is going with us. Amen. Shall we pray? Gracious God, we thank you for your abiding presence. I pray for each one of my friends today. I ask your blessing, your peace to rest with them. Lord Jesus, you know what's what's going on in our lives. You know that if we're facing times of deep worry and concern and pain. Maybe even we feel alone and abandoned and, and we call out, my God, my God. And it seems like an empty cry. But you're with us and you're faithful. We ask your blessing, your peace, your protection to be upon each one. You're good and we rest in you. We thank you for this, Lord Jesus. It's in your name we pray. And together we pray, Lord Jesus, as you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
pardon, pardon for you and for me. Come home, home, come home, home. you who are weary, come home, earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, O sinner, Thanks again for taking time to join together. We pray God's blessing and peace to be with you today. May the strength of God pilot us. May the power of God preserve us. May the wisdom of God instruct us. May the hand of God protect us. May the way of God direct us. May the shield of God defend us. May the host of God guard us against the snares of evil and the temptations of the world. May Christ be with us, Christ before us, Christ in us, Christ over us. May your salvation, O God, be always ours this day and forevermore. We pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.